I have been teaching kids over 30 years and it's my passion. Uh, I have to do it because I, I want to give them their happiness of understanding math and to give them tools so that they can manage well in their life. We were in Leeds University because it was famous for its uh, research of science teaching and, and learning. They put us in the groups and they gave us a problem to solve and it was really a hard problem and it was so exciting because we're talking and debating and testing. I was like in fire and I begin to think, oh my God, what kind of environmental helps you to learn? And I think that was the key moment in my whole teaching career. When you are really learning, if you are working in groups, if you have possibility to talk about it, if you have the possibility to test it, that's the best way to find the solution. And you are learning from others. When I get students on the seventh grade, I ask them first to draw a picture of typical math lesson. And their pictures, they are sitting in the rows. The only one who is talking there is mostly the teacher, and there is no connection between them. And when I look at their faces, they are uh, confused, they don't understand at all what is going on. Somebody is even frightened. They said that they would even take trash out and do the math homework. And then after three years, when I have taught them three years, I ask them again to draw a picture of typical math lesson. And the change is huge. Now they are drawing, working together, they are talking, and when I look at the faces, how they draw themselves, they are smiling, they are relaxed, they are having fun. When Marit comes, she always has something different. What about if we start the lesson with a problem related to the children or to the world? What if they have to combine new information in a new way? They don't ask her anymore, what is the meaning of the math? Marit, she helps us like understand them better and she makes it always fun and different. For example, they made a model of cubic meter with the sticks. Sometimes we get to build something and sometimes we get to look at pictures, for example, of shapes. They need to measure the diameter and the circumference of the circle. I collected the data and they, they counted first the ratio. And what was the magic? Even they have different size of the circles, the ratio was the same. If we, example, draw the circles inside on the, on the board or on paper or something like that, it isn't as, as much as fun as going outside and doing really big circles and putting colorful water there and just having fun because you memorize them much, uh, much easier when it's fun. One very interesting example of interdisciplinary math was that how many drugs to transport and feed people in 11 refugee camps. And it's very basic math. And it's still logistic, it's critical thinking, what kind of transports you are doing. And you understand the, the calories of the food, what people need that they are, can be alive. During these years, I have been an author of math books and then we decided that we can't do it anymore in books. So let's do it in e-learning. Now we have the path to math, mostly based on what I think about the learning. It goes well to core curriculum in the United States. And I'm so excited again because I think that we can bring this easier to everybody, what we have done for more than 20 years. In a modern way, in a modern platform, and bring new qualities also. PISA is international test to the 15 years old. And I think I didn't even understand how amazing results we got. Finland was first of all the countries and our school was much higher of the average Finland and girls in my school were higher than the boys. And this has continued so that the last bizarre results, there are any more three countries where girls are doing math as well as the boys. And Finland is one of those countries. 
and think the girls, they like to talk with themselves, they like to debate, they like to be in groups. So there's a huge possibility to get girls involved, like I have got. And now in Finland we have a new curriculum coming. They want the change so that it's more student-centered, that they really learn, not that we are only throwing the information, that they are building the knowledge and they are enjoying the learning. Finland has in 15 years come from the poor country to a rich country. And the reason is because the nation understand the importance of education. It's really something magic when he or she understands the power of the mind. There is no other being in this globe than a human being who has this mind of power. And math can open it.